this video we'll be starting a new project. It's a project for the 9838 desktop calculator. Uh, but before we get to that, just to finish off uh, the work I was doing on the HP 9862A plotter. In the series of videos I posted for this machine, I went through the repair and restoration. And in a recent video, I showed uh, how I got the tape drive properly working for the 9830A. And now the tape drive works, I can of course enter some more meaningful test programs. And there are um, quite a number of test programs available from HP for testing the various machines. So I've entered quite a few of those, and on this tape I've got the uh, proper test program for the plotter. So before we get on to the main subject of this video, I'll just quickly run that um, test so you can see um, what the test is that uh, HP created for the plotter. It's quite straightforward, but um, it will hopefully give some idea as to the sorts of test code that's available. So I'll just replace the paper, I'll get a fresh piece of paper in the plotter. Get the two machines turned on. Okay, and now I'll load the test program from the tape. Now run that test program. Okay, so as you can see, the plotter, the interface, and the calculator are all now working fine. So um, I'll reposition the camera and we'll get on to the uh, main topic for this video. So what I'll be doing in this series of videos is creating a uh, module PCB for the 9830A calculator. HP used to supply firmware options or software options in modules like this and they had a whole range of them that uh, provided uh, various functions things, uh, as I say, advanced programming, string variables, matrix, uh, and they had others. Uh, one of those was the uh, plotter control. Uh, you, you can, as you can see, control the plotter without the cartridge. Um, the cartridge is really for uh, drawing things like circles, text, that sort of thing. Just it makes the plotter far more capable. Um, but the problem with these cartridges is they are rare, uh, expensive, and uh, there's not a great deal in them, just a couple of um, ROMs. So if we have a look inside one of these, then all we've got is um, it's actually two pairs of ROMs. So this is a, a 2K card. And uh, that's all that's in one of these modules. And they're, of course, all the same. The only thing that's different is the code that runs in the ROMs. Now, these are mask ROMs, so you can't reprogram them. Um, they are programmed at the point of manufacture. Um, but as you can see, the card's fairly simple. And so this is what I want to reproduce. But rather than making one that um, is specific to each type of module, I want to make a generic version of this card that uses a more modern EEPROM. And the idea there, of course, is that you can program the EEPROM with whatever uh, module code you want uh, and thereby have uh, access to all the modules without having to spend thousands of pounds uh, buying uh, old vintage modules that may fail at any time uh, but also uh, it is very expensive um, so it would be nice to have access to this. Uh, in addition there is only um, space for five of these modules in the machine. You can put three cards and you can get the same um, code in the form of uh, plug-in PCB, so it's pretty much the same but a uh, different uh, way that it's put into the machine. So you can have a total of up to eight uh, of the modules installed, um, but what I want is to have the um, card that we're going to make switchable so that you can program the EEPROM that's on the card with a whole range of uh, module code and you just select whichever one you want. Now the uh, videos that we'll start with will go about how I'm going to approach this 
uh, it's not particularly difficult it's a fairly straightforward task and in fact if you watched my series of videos when I originally repaired this machine you'll know that the uh, ROM card in it had some failed ROMs and uh, so I had to come up with a replacement for this so what I did was to create a drop-in replacement that used a more modern EEPROM and you can see from this how much easier life is these days uh, we could use a single uh, EEPROM uh, whereas back in the day they had to use a whole range, a whole load of EEPROMs uh, and on this board uh, you can see there are a whole stack of them uh, but we could use just uh, one. Now the interface for the HP 9830 it's not particularly complicated but there are some traps that we need to be aware of before we start this so uh, because it's such a simple board I'm going to be able to uh, breadboard this so I don't need to um, make any uh, prototype boards until I fully tested this so I'm just going to turn the uh, 9830 off so there's no fan noise and uh, then we'll have a look at the schematics and I'll go over the approach I'm going to take for this project okay so the first thing I'm going to need is the ability to uh, connect a breadboard to the 9830 and there's many ways I could have done this um, but what I've decided to do is I've made up a small adapter um, these uh, sockets accept the uh, flying jumpers for breadboard work and then this of course just plugs into one of the slots um, that the modules normally plug into so that gives me an easy way to connect to the 9830 so the next thing we have to look at is uh, what the connections actually are and luckily there is quite a lot of information available for the 9830 so this bottom right hand uh, table is the one we're interested in here so this is the connections for the uh, actual module card so um, already we know what the connections to this are so that simplifies life we don't have to reverse engineer that we can just work it out there is a complication with this particular type of ROM that I went over when I designed the drop-in main ROM card and that is that firstly these are 512 by 2 um, byte ROMs and for some bizarre reason the address 8 line is on two separate pins so you've got an address 8 and a not address 8 so it's not fully decoded within the device that's something we need to take care of externally it's handled in the uh, plotter by having two lines come in to control it but uh, of course if we're using a single uh, ROM that we need to make sure that uh, we properly control that line. So when I designed the main ROM card for this I used one of these and this is uh, quite a, a big device as you can see so this is a 27C400 and the reason I used this was because um, it's got a 16-bit um, data bus on it so it stores 16-bit words which was uh, what the 9830 needed so it made life a lot easier. Um, the only thing is it's kind of a, a big device to use for such a small module uh, having said that it will contain images for quite a few um, but even so it's still maybe, maybe a bit overkill so thinking about this I decided what I could use instead is maybe uh, a pair of more standard 8-bit uh, ROMs and um, that would uh, enable me to um, just build the card to accept more easily uh, accessible ROMs not everyone's programmer will handle something like this um, but then I had another idea which was uh, I could actually do both so what I'm going to do is um, design the card so that it will accept either a single 16-bit ROM or two 8-bit ROMs and then you just fit whichever one you want the only thing to bear in mind is uh, of course the code for the two 8-bit ROMs will have to be split um, so that's the approach I'm going to take for this, it will just make it far more flexible. So the next thing is um, how to go about designing the actual circuitry. And so if we look at the schematics for the 9830, then um, the first thing we have is the way that the ROM cards are addressed. Now I had hoped to make a single module that would automatically occupy or provide uh, multiple ROM images in other words a single card would 
um, without any changes being made to it, make the machine think that multiple uh, modules were plugged in. Unfortunately, that's not really possible because of the way that the uh, 9830 addresses these cards. So on this back plane that the modules plug into, so these essentially slide in from the side and plug into uh, some connectors that run up this card. Pins 17 and 18 are used to select the top or the left or right pair of ROMs. So if we look on the schematic, we'll see that's these two connections. So each one of these is a separate slot in this card. And although it looks like they are going to different address lines, they're not, they're all going to pin 17 and 18 on the, uh, the actual modules. Um, but these come from a 1 of 16 uh, bit decoder. So in other words, only one pair of ROMs is ever selected at once, uh, irrespective of which uh, slot it's plugged into, but using the same pins. And because it's using the same pins, but on different slots, uh, we can't have a single card plug in and gain access to all of these. In other words, the two um, address lines going here are only available on this slot. They're not available on the other slots. If they're available across all the slots, then of course um, we could, um, I mean separately on the other slots, then we would be able to um, have multiple images accessible at the same time. Uh, unfortunately we can't do that so what I'm going to do is on the actual module there will be a dill switch along the edge and you'll have to select which particular uh, image you want to uh, make active within the card. Uh, you need to be careful if you fit multiple ones of course to make sure that um, you only enable one um, with a particular image at any one time. Uh, the way this machine works is when it uh, starts up it's um, interrogates this uh, bus to see uh, what's plugged in and the same with the internal bus and um, it makes a kind of a mental note of um, what modules it has plugged in and if you had two the same it would probably get very confused uh, and also you'd be enabling more than one at once. Okay so, um, so that's fairly easy for us to sort out it just means that there'll be some restriction on uh, having to have a separate card for each particular uh, enabled image that you've got, but you will still be able to have a generic uh, card with multiple images. Okay, so that's uh, fairly easy to sort out. That's just the decoding that we need. Uh, and incidentally, this is the two address lines I was talking about with regards to uh, selecting the banks of ROMs. So the next thing we have to do is look at how they're actually addressed. And again, very straightforward and we just have this arrangement uh, down here for uh, selecting the particular address for uh, the byte we want to read from the ROM. So very straightforward. The only thing to bear in mind is that these are inverted, um, but that's exactly the same as we had with the, um, the main ROM card. So the next thing uh, we need is to determine how we are going to get the data out of the module. And um, this is uh, fairly straightforward, there's nothing really complex in it. The thing to bear in mind is that the modules, um, this is the data bus coming from the memory and going into the uh, T-register card. So all the ROM cards, this is the, the main ROM card, comes into this bus, feeds into the T-register. The ROM cards, it's the internal cards, um, feed into the same bus, the RAM feeds into that bus, and the ROM cartridges feed into this bus. The only real difference between the cartridges and the cards is that all the cards have built-in buffers. So we've got these buffers on the output. And um, these are open collector buffers. So that's how you can connect them all together on the common bus. They, uh, only the ones that are currently active will uh, pull the uh, the lines low on the data bus. So we need to tell that to account and if we look back down the bus you'll see that these are connected directly to the cards so the buffers are on the cards themselves. But for the modules the buffers are on a separate uh, card. 
So this set of buffers is actually on this backplane and it's not on the um, module itself. So the ROM cartridges don't need to have internal buffers. We can just wire it up exactly as the main uh, ROM is wired up and emit these buffers. So in other words, all the ROMs are wired together and their outputs are effectively tri-stated uh, unless the particular pair of ROMs is selected. And of course, that's how a modern EEPROM will work. So this incoming line can be used in exactly the same way to enable or disable the particular module. And then when it's connected to these buffers, only the one that's selected will put data out onto the buffer. And we're fairly safe to do this because we're not going to blow the rest of the machine up because uh, worst case, all we're going to do is blow up one of these uh, or one of the other uh, cartridges if we make a mistake. So that's the main thing to bear in mind is that um, we need to make sure that we properly control the addressing to the cartridges to make sure that only one is ever selected at any one time. If we look on the schematic, there's no real internal information. I assume that whoever drew this didn't take one of the modules apart. So they have exactly the same inputs and outputs as one of the plug-in cards. Uh, but as I said, the plug-in card has the uh, buffer built into it, but the modules don't. And we can um, kind of back up that assumption by looking at the modules themselves, where you can see that all that's on here are the actual ROMs. Whereas if you look at one of the plug-in cards, you'll see it has the ROMs and then the buffer chips. So that simplifies things for us even more. All we need to do for our uh, module is to replace the ROMs. We need to create the ROM images, of course, to put into the EEPROMs. Uh, and then we need to uh, have a way to switch between the various uh, images that will be in that uh, ROM set. So that's the approach I'm going to take. And uh, rather than going straight to a PCB layout, the first thing I'm going to do is to hook up a breadboard to the 9830. We'll install some ROMs and see if we can get it to talk to the um, 9830 calculator and whether we can actually uh, create the functionality we're looking for. If that works, I'll translate that into a PCB design. Uh, and then uh, add the additional functionality using the switches to enable us to select different um, images within that card. Um, and if that all goes to plan, I'll get some cards ordered. And um, if you want one, they'll be on my website. Um, but either way, it will be quite a, an interesting uh, exercise trying to get this working. <laughs>